Hello, welcome. My name is Amber. This is my channel, A Fox Loves Handiwork. Today, I am going to make mittens using old or secondhand wool sweaters and fabric that I have either thrifted or are my own and have shrunk or I don't use anymore. I found a pattern on a line and I'm gonna be following this person's directions. This is the first time that I am making this type of mitten of sewing fabric together, but I'm very excited. If you enjoy crafting and sewing and creating things with your hands, you are in the right place. So the first thing I needed to get started, my fabric scissors, twine, embroidery thread, needles, and some pins. That'll be needed for the sewing portion of putting the mittens together. I'll also need some regular scissors, paper, pens, maybe a ruler, we'll see, to create the template for the mittens. And finally, as I mentioned, we're gonna need fabric, wool. I cho chose wool garments. They are very warm, they're a natural fiber, and as I mentioned, these are either thrifted or secondhand. The pattern that I will be following for these mittens is written by Beth Huntington, and I'm following a post that she made for eHow. I'll be sure to link uh, that post down below so you can follow along or make your own mittens if you're feeling inspired. So the first step that we need to do is create a template. That is why I have paper here. For the lining, we're gonna need three templates. The top portion, the underside, it's like half your thumb, the bottom half, and then the upper half meets in your thumb. To create the pattern on the eHow post, Beth has provided some PDFs with the template. I am just gonna eyeball it and use my own hand as a reference and we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know what I think. I'd also like to be able to make these for different sizes so that I could gift these and having a sense of how to make the templates I think will help me with making different sizes, but we're gonna start with my own hand because that's what I got. I now have the three pieces needed for the template. And this pattern has the thumbs um, kind of on the inside of the mitten as opposed to protruding out to the side. Using the templates, you can, as I construct it, you can see, start to visualize how the mitten will come together. The next part is deciding what fabric do I want for each piece. This is a scarf that I picked up recently while thrifting at the Goodwill bins, and it just has a really unique texture. So if you've seen that video, you've already seen all of the things I found, um, some of which you'll recognize in this video. Cool bumps, they're woven in, and this is super soft. I actually don't know for sure if it's uh, wool, but based on the texture, it has to have some sort of like merino wool or some sort of percentage. I love the color. It's this muted kind of teal and kind of a muted lime kind of color for the tufts. I thought that would be such a cool decorative piece for it to be the top portion. This is a jacket that I got while thrifting as well on the same trip. It is 100% wool. It's this beautiful purple color. And I thought that these 
two fabrics look really nice. They really complement each other. Kind of soft pastels, they're both really soft. And so, definitely wanna use these, um, these two. In the pattern, I mean, what's kind of cool about this is you can do whatever you want. Uh, so I was kind of envisioning like one color on the top and then a second color on the bottom, those two pieces. I think I'm gonna try that with this. This is gonna be the top. I'll have this as the bottom. This is a little bit thinner than this material. Um, so I might have to layer this with something. We're gonna figure it out, but first step is cutting. Actually, the first step will be tracing the templates. Tracing over this fabric was kind of interesting because the little tufts uh, would catch on the marker, but I made it work. I did decide to double up on this fabric, so I'll explain in just a moment here in the video. And then of course I needed two of them for two mittens. I used pins to pin the two layers together so that when I cut the pieces out, they didn't shift and it stayed together nicely. now have two of each piece and I did double up on this fabric because it is thin. Having this on the outside, the texture will look really cool, but then uh, having it also on the inside will create pockets of air, help keep your hand nice and warm. The next step now is putting these together to sew. Now I'm going to stitch along the middle seam here on the thumb using this purple embroidery twine. One could use a sewing machine. I'm in the mood for hand stitching. It's a little bit thicker, so my machine might have a little bit of trouble with this. I think it'd do just fine, but I'm gonna give it the old hand sew. I am using a back stitch. I felt like this would create more durability and more strength on this seam as it will get lots of wear and tear. Now time to put the 
front and back together. I placed that inside the purple on top of the teal, kind of tested it out there, and now I will pin it and stitch it. It is the next day. I spent the evening sewing up the mittens and I discovered that they're too small. So you learn from your mistakes. This fits my hand fine, but it has not been reversed. So this needs to be reversed. In Beth's plan, or in her design, she does create a liner. Since this wool is much thicker than the sweaters she used, I don't think I'm gonna do a liner. And just, you know, luckily this is soft enough that I don't think it should be an issue. So by just kind of tracing my hand and giving a little bit of a, of a seam allowance, that did not, I did not take into account the space needed to reverse it. Um, they are so cute though. So these would be perfect for a child. Here is the, here's the other one that's been flipped. They kind of look like, like a little dinosaur or reptile. So cute. So I've learned this project is a smash, smashing success. We just have to make them bigger. So I'm going to keep these. They're so cute. So last night I cut out some larger ones. I did label my patterns. So I did label these kid so that if I want to make more, I have those templates. So I went ahead and made a larger size. I did the same colors because I kind of like them. And I stitched up this one last night. Time to cut out that second mitten. The next step in Beth's plan is to add a cuff. And so I'm going to use, she uses the cuff from the sweater. This is a kind of more of a suit jacket. So I'm gonna experience, I mean, I'm gonna adjust to the plan, uh, but I think it should still work out. To make the cuff, Beth says in the e -how, in her e how post is to cut off four inches of the sleeve of a sweater. I decided to go with five inches. I thought a little extra can never hurt. The side of this jacket has that little uh, slit, and so four inches would have been right at the slit, and so five inches kind of gave put me above that slit. Since I've already measured this first cuff, I'm just overlapping onto the second sleeve here. So then I cutting, going for my second cut. This jacket is pretty um, stiff. I imagine like a sweater would be more flapsy, but this held its shape. So now I have these two cuffs. And the directions are to actually inside them out and slip the inside it out cuff over the inside it out mitten. So I'm gonna give that a try. I'm gonna stitch around the circumference, so around the mitten hole.
So first mitten I have finished. I didn't do a back stitch, just did a single stitch. Uh, partly because this won't have direct wear, where, where, like your thumbs and hands, right? You're, you're using your hands so much for stuff that I wanted to make sure that those seams were very durable. So I also wanted to show how this mitten, I did end up kind of ruffling the cuff because the cuff was wider than the mitten. Um, I did do a wider opening on this mitten. So we'll see, cause I felt like this was kind of tight. So I think that's something I'm learning for next time is to be sure to measure out the cuffs. Beth does have you do that first. And I was like, I wanna get into the sewing. So that is why it's probably first to make sure that that uh, circumference diameter matches up with the mitten. So for the reveal, this is the inside it out mitten. So the first thing I'm going to do is inside out or right side out the mitten. Again, one reason that I chose to hand stitch is that it got really quite thick here. All the wool that's rolled up, I don't know if my sewing machine would have handled it. So I find it useful to, oh, this one. This is the tighter one. I was gonna say, I find it useful to put my hand in there. So I'm using my thumb to push it out. You could definitely use like a rounded pen or just, so I'm actually gonna insert that pen in there and push it to push out the thumb. Okay, so the mitten is the right side out, but that cuff is still inside. So we pull out the cuff and flip it over so that the unattractive seam is now hidden. This jacket cuff did have a slit in it, which is common for jackets. And I was just curious, I did decide to put it on the outer edge and I do think I'm gonna have to stitch it up. I was gonna, I was curious to see if I could manage without, cause this is what you would see otherwise. I might keep a little bit of it. That's kind of attractive. So I'm gonna stitch this up, but here is our mitten. In Beth's directions, she has uh, the directions are to put a button here and sew it down. That's going to help secure this flap open. For this mitten, I think I might do some tack, like it's called tacks, so where you just use a little bit of, where you do use a little bit of thread to hold it in place. Or I could also imagining doing like some decorative kind of embroidery stitches, like some X's or some sort of pattern that would elevate it, give it a little de decoration, but then also has that utilitarian uh, purpose. I have finished up both mittens. And for the final reveal, yay! They are so cozy. I learned lots of things along the way. I measured out five inches for the cuff, partly because of the slit here that was on the jacket. It does come up pretty high. I think uh, the four inches makes sense. That would have been come down here. And then I also have an idea of, so the length from the tip of my fingers to the end, um, that's gonna determine how far it goes up my arm, which makes sense, but like I hadn't really thought through that. So. These, I, I, I do actually kind of like how they go up past my wrist. These could be hard to wear with certain jackets because sometimes jackets have that like elastic around the edges, but they are so darling, so sweet. Oh, I did end up, just keep this off. I ended up kind of tacking it right here um, so that it's, when I try to peel it right, um, I do have a feeling I might get snow stuck in here depending on how I use these, but 
super, super fun. Thank you so much for following along. If you enjoyed watching me, felt inspired, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, check out my other videos and hit that subscribe button. I am all about making things with my hand, reusing materials, being creative and crafty. If you wanna see more of things I do, I have an Instagram, a.fox.gloves.handiwork. I post um, more tidbits of things that I'm, the handiwork that I'm doing. So until next time, thank you. Bye.